just keep your steady throttle on it. Turn it. Turn it and turn that way. Last night, replaced this, replaced that. I cleaned up the surfaces with some brake cleaner. And we're going to reinstall the intake manifold and get everything back together to see if this thing will uh, not overheat anymore. We're still waiting on that rear cooler lines. I think what we'll do is we'll get it running, check up the air suspension to get it up off the ground higher, pull the fuses out, and then uh, try to dig under there and pull the cooling or the heater lines going back to the heater core. Uh, just the heater core we pulled off yesterday and it is not plugged. Um, we ran water through it, uh, shook it around. You could feel it flowing pretty good through it. So the rear heater core is not plugged. It looks like it's one of the lines going to it. We have a feeling it's right around there at the spare tire carrier area. So we're gonna get it raised up so we can work under there better. So let's finish this and get to that. Okay, so to remove your intake manifold, you're gonna to wanna to disconnect your EGR pipe right here. It's two number 10s. I sprayed WD-40 on them, that's what we did. And then you're gonna take, well, we took this off, you probably don't need to, but it just gives us a little bit more room. If you do, it's just four number eights. But really, you don't have to take it off. Uh, you're gonna disconnect all your fuel inj aid and fuel injectors you're gonna disconnect your fuel line coming in here you'll need a I'll show it to you I'll get you the size here when I get back to the shop um, disconnect that one there's a vacuum hose on the back and your mass airflow sensor on the very back bottom you'll have to unplug that there's a fuel pressure sensor on the back of your passenger side fuel rail, you have to unplug along with your four injectors on this side. And then you have, let's see, 16 bolts. One, two, three, four, five, no, 10 bolts. 10 bolts, so five on each side of your intake runners. Uh, oh, to get to the back two, I'll have to take two number eights out of this bracket, to push it back to get to the back two intake manifold brackets or bolts. And then it just lifts up, Be careful. Blow it out with air before you get, before you pull it off so nothing falls in your intake chambers. Pretty straightforward. It's got an upper and lower intake manifold, but to pull the upper intake, which is the plastic section, you actually have to pull the lower part off too, because the screws for that upper intake go in from the bottom. So there's no way to pull it off with uh, just the upper intake. All right, we'll get back at it. Okay. So now we're uh, continuing the reassembly of the LR3. We got our new Land Rover, or new radiator in. Let's see if I can get an angle of it, nice and shiny, clean. So to remove the radiator on these, we did it. Obviously, you got to get the fan out, your shroud, all that good stuff. We don't have any hoses on there because we're going to replace those. But the actual hardware that bolts it on, let's see, there's one bolt there. One bolt there. Okay, you'll take those two bolts out. You got a transmission cooler line, upper and lower. So take those two hoses off. There's these little plastic pins, which what I found works best is to take a screwdriver and just slide it up. Because all it does is slide, Let's see if I can do this one handed, just like that, then you pull it out. And re putting it back in the same way. Just push it back down. You got one of those on both sides. There's the other one. And then once you, you'll get these out, it'll lean forward. And then your air conditioning condenser is held on by two screws, one on each side. One here, and one back behind. You can't see it. It's behind this little cross member. Take those off. And then the bottom of the air conditioning condenser slides into two clips on the radio, it's radiator itself. So just kind of slightly lift up and then you'll be able to pull your radiator out. All right, so now we're gonna start putting hoses on. So here's your, uh, I guess, upper or lower radiator hose. It goes from the bottom of the radiator up to your thermostat housing. And then there's two lines right there that attach to our oil cooler. So four connections on this particular hose.
and that's what we're gonna put on now. I'd probably work from the bottom up. Uh, so we got the low radiator hose. You can see it's clamped down to the bottom of the radiator. Two lines going to the oil cooler and then up to the thermostat housing. There's a little clip here, hold it in place. Now we're gonna get the rest of the lines on, remount the reservoir tank. Hopefully we'll be able to draw a vacuum down and see if she can uh, keep from leaking. Okay, we got all the new hoses put on. Uh, we're just buttoning it up. Luke's putting the air cleaner cover back on. Should have everything connected. Looks good, all holes clamps in place. So now we're gonna put a vacuum on the system. You just match them up to the one you need. And this kind of tightens it down once you get it in there. We have three valves. This is where I'll connect my air compressor hose. We'll open this one and let it run. It usually gets, you know, 15, 16 inches of vacuum. Uh, then once it's done, if it holds a vacuum, we'll close this valve, close this valve, let it sit for 15 minutes. If we hold the vacuum, then we're fairly confident on the system. Then it has a, this hose, it's got a screen on it. We'll stick this into our coolant drugs, slowly open this one, and it'll draw that coolant into the system. And then in between coolant bottles, we'll close the valve, switch bottles, open the valve back up, and get as much coolant in there as possible. So that's what we're gonna do now. All right, we got, okay, we got the uh, airline connected to it. We're gonna go ahead and open it. Open this one. We should start seeing it. Pull the vacuum. The see as hoses start to constrict. Right now, coming up on 10. You see the hose constricting. The air getting sucked out of it. We're at 15. Seventeen. We're holding right there just above 7, oh, 17 and a half, 18 actually, huh? 18 and a half, almost 19, so we'll hold it right there by closing this valve, we'll shut off the air compressor, so right now it's holding steady at 19. We'll let it sit, we'll start the clock, and come back in 15 minutes. Okay, so uh, it's held its vacuum. We're gonna go ahead, we got this inserted into our coolant bottle. Now we open this valve here, and you see the coolant flow in there. It goes pretty, fairly fast, starts dropping down. Before it gets empty and starts sucking air, I always shut it off and switch bottles. Okay, so it's uh, no longer drawing in the coolant, so we're gonna go ahead and disconnect things, top off the coolant reservoir, and start the motor. Okay, so while we're waiting on those hoses back there, the pipes just took one of the section of hoses and looped the two connectors together right here on, along the back of the engine on the firewall. That allows us to uh, run the engine and do the testing on the cooling system. And I guess I can give you an update on that. So after replacing the radiator, all our hoses, the thermostat housing, we did a vacuum test on the system, it passed, and we did our first successful test drive. The engine does not over.
aluminum straps and aren't even tight. Stay back. This one should be tucked in there nice. Oh yeah. That's probably as far tucked as you can go with those bump stops. No rubbing. That one's tight. A side angle of the other side. Huh? Yeah. So we're trying to build some little humps to test the suspension out. Just keep your steady throttle on it. Turn it. Turn to turn that way. There you go. Keep going. Keep turning. Okay. Go backwards. Straight back. Okay, stop. Now go forward with momentum. Keep your momentum. Pop it through. Done. Almost had it. Stop. Stop. It won't get you, give you any more gas. It's in low range. Good. No. Do you're in mud and ruts? Do rock crawl. There you go. Keep going, keep going. Keep going. Keep going, keep going. As you saw in that uh, clip of the video, for some reason we don't have any low end torque on the Land Rover and the 
traction control doesn't seem to be working properly. Uh, we still have a check engine light on, reporting the fuel trim. We thought replacing that mass airflow sensor would fix that. We cleared the code and it comes right back. So we're going to have to do some research on that. We, didn't, we know there's no air leaks on the intake now. So, if you got any ideas, leave a comment down below. The good news is the Land Rover's not overheating, so that's a big win. Fix the cooling issue, looks like the radiator was the biggest problem, and then some maybe pop plugged hoses. So, we are going to be waiting for the cool heater lines on the back, and we did notice that our windshield washer fluid on the front sprayers aren't working properly, so we're going to troubleshoot that one. While we wait for the hose and get ready for our first uh, off-road adventure with it. Otherwise, thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next video as we try to figure out uh, this next issue.